Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from today. I'm pleased to have Ingrid here on the webinar uh, from Whereby, uh, the co-founder and Chief Technology and Product Officer. And we're gonna get started in just a couple minutes. Today, we're gonna be covering Virtual Equipments 101, how to present and close the deal without being in the home. I see we've got a lot of remodelers on the line here, a lot of exterior companies as well. And I'm really excited for this topic. It's something that I don't think has been covered as much as it should it be, should be covered in this industry uh, because it's what we're seeing here at Hatch with our customers that are running virtual appointments to, with respect to the remodeling space, especially interior remodelers. It's really helping companies do more with less resources. They're able to run more appointments because they're sitting behind a computer rather than traveling from home to home. So we're seeing a lot of success from these virtual appointments and that the American consumer, the, the American homeowner is uh, more apt and more willing to have these virtual appointments than ever before, especially in the age of COVID, unfortunately. Um, but it's really forcing the industry to shift. And that's something that's super interesting here with uh, COVID and, and the pandemic. It's forcing, uh, you know, remodeling companies and home improvement companies all across the board to adapt new technologies and offer these virtual appointments. And what we're finding is homeowners are really appreciating these virtual appointments. So today we're going to cover how to actually run these virtual appointments. Uh, I want, I, I really wanted uh, to make sure we had an expert on the line here to talk about how to run virtual appointments. And Ingrid is uh, perfect for that with her company, Whereby, uh, virtual meetings platform. And then of course, closing the deal without even stepping foot, foot into the home. So I see folks are jumping on the line here on the webinar. We got some remodeling folks and some exterior folks that are jumping on. So we'll give it just a couple minutes before we get started here. Give people time to join. And I want to thank Ingrid for hopping on. Ingrid, it's seven o'clock your time, correct? <laughs> yes, it is. So just put my daughter in bed. Um, here in Oslo and Norway, we are uh, approaching winter, actually. We've started having kind of um, winterish temperatures, and uh, I'm just waiting for the first snow. When does it get dark there? Um, 4 p.m. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Already, <sorry>. yeah. <laughs> I think we're, uh, like, beginning of December is the, is the worst time. Um, and then it shifts and becomes lighter again. But I really miss, I used to live in Boston for a year and a half. And the, the best thing about that was you still got the snow, but it was light at 7 in the morning. Because <laughs> here you go to the office and it's dark. And you go out of the office to go home and it's dark again. So you really have to kind of make use of the daylight. I think that's actually one of the nicest things now with um, with um, working from home is you have a much more flexible schedule. So you can actually go out during the daytime. And Ingrid, you're working on remodeling projects right now, right? I am, or I have been for the last four years. <laughs> we, <laughs> Me and my partner bought a, a house from 1972 um, that had only had one owner and they hadn't done a lot of... Um, maintenance or uh, uh, keeping it up to date to modern standards. So we have done uh, more or less a complete overhaul. Um, the last thing we did now was uh, put in a complete new floor in the 150 square meters in the basement uh, with water uh, heating. And um, that's kind of increased the whole quality of the, the whole house, just getting the temperature up. <laughs> no doubt. And you're home all the time, so. Yeah, now we can benefit. <laughs> there we go. Cool. All right. Uh, great. So I see a couple more folks are, are jumping in here. A couple quick housekeeping items, guys. Uh, there's a Q&A section on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, so drop in any questions that you might have for myself or Ingrid as we go through this. Uh, there's also a chat section as well. Uh, so there'll be a couple opportunities for you to jump in and communicate and uh, you know give us feedback and you know communicate with the other attendees. So I want to make this as collaborative as possible because a lot of folks are running virtual appointments in different ways. Uh, so today we're here to present best practices on how to actually run these appointments as well as uh, everything that you need to be doing to close the deal without even stepping foot in the home. And uh, I'm pleased to be joined by Ingrid Odengard from Whereby. Um, so with that said, Ingrid, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about Whereby. Uh, what's your history? I mean, it's super exciting. You're in Boston and now you're in Oslo, it's, that's, uh, that's quite a change there. So uh, Yeah, so uh, it's a bit of a random um, 
luck that I ended up here, but I've, uh, I studied economics, have always uh, been interested in entrepreneurship. So I got the chance to go to Boston to study that and really loved the culture over there, spent a year and a half there. And um, now uh, I've been working with Whereby for the last seven years, and it's been amazing. Um, when we started out, it was basically um, very few good offerings in terms of video meetings, and they were all really cumbersome to set up. Um, so we have been trying to remove the friction of getting people into video calls by being purely browser-based and have really easy to review room links, like whereby.com slash Ingrid, so that you can just send people a link and they click it and immediately join the call. So I think we were quite well positioned now before the pandemic, and we have obviously seen a great surge and we try to live our vision as well and and really um, experience the pain of our customers so we're um, for li fully distributed team now with around 70 employees around the world uh, also in the US so all of our company processes and tools are kind of adapted to uh, maintaining uh, and growing a remote team so I hope to share some of those practices here today um, I normally have around three to five video calls a day. Um, so I'm quite, uh, quite used to it. That's great, Ingrid. And, and for everybody, just, uh, just to let everybody know, Hatch internally, we use Whereby, uh, especially our development teams. When they're working together on programming, they use Whereby. Uh, so we also build an integration with Whereby as well. So remodelers using Hatch, and I'll talk on this a little bit, uh, can instantly drop that, that Whereby link to run that virtual appointment. Uh, using Hatch as their the messaging vehicle uh, to communicate that. So really excited to be you know meeting for me. I'm I'm geeking out a little bit meeting Ingrid because I'm a user of the of the solution that she's built. So Ingrid, thanks again for joining. <laughs> I'm happy to, and it's really cool that you have built an integration, um, which is is I, and also very cool that you're bringing kind of technology and innovation into this uh, little bit brick and mortar business or industry. So uh, I think a lot of homeowners will appreciate that. Excellent. Just to lay the land here, guys, um, the best practices that we're going to be sharing today are based upon what's working and what isn't for a lot of the top remodelers that we're working with today. I'm sure you recognize some of these names. So uh, the best practices that we're sharing are, are what's working for these folks. And I'm excited uh, to share both you know, how to run these meetings as well as how to close deals without being in the home. There's going to be a couple of giveaways today on the webinar. Uh, we're going to give away a month of Hatch for free. Uh, so this will allow you to use Hatch to message homeowners, set those virtual appointments over text, email, or phone. And then Whereby is also giving away all attendees a free trial of their business plan for three months to run virtual appointments on desktop or mobile. And that's one thing I want to make note of here, guys. Like you're going to walk away from this webinar. We're going to send you a link at the close of this webinar. So stick around uh, to sign up for that. Uh, it's, it's a really great solution. The homeowner doesn't need to download an app in order for it to run, which is one of the big friction points with homeowners and running these virtual appointments. They don't even have to download anything. They can just join right on their mobile phone browser. It's it's tremendous. So uh, we're really excited to give these give these uh, two giveaways at the end of the webinar. Looking at today's attendees, a lot of remodelers here, uh, mostly interior remodelers, some exterior folks, and a little bit of real estate. All of you guys um, are either you know, running virtual appointments or considering virtual appointments. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on this webinar. Uh, we did a poll on the uh, webinar page that you signed up on, 48% uh, or excuse me, 46% of you guys are not running virtual appointments and 53% are running virtual appointments. So uh, if you're considering virtual appointments, this is gonna be a great webinar for you. If you are running virtual appointments, hopefully you walk away with some really good tidbits on how to improve those and help you close more. Really, that's the goal here, guys. We wanna engage homeowners, create a good customer experience and ultimately close more jobs. What we're finding today and working with a lot of specifically remodelers is they're struggling to close deals without stepping foot in the home. Uh, the virtual selling is tough for a lot of these folks. And what we're finding is it really boils down to three key things. The first one is a lack of tools to sell digitally, whether that be a quoting tool, an estimating tool, a uh, tool to actually run the virtual appointment, as well as actually have a virtual presentation that isn't, you know, a pamphlet or a piece of paper. All these things uh, are things that the sales rep needs to be successful. 
And what we're finding is a lot of remodelers do not have this at, on hand, um, especially with respect to a messaging solution, texting solution, a quoting tool. Uh, that's something that a lot of remodelers do not have today. So it's really important uh, that we first take a step back and say, okay, we need tools to be successful here. It's how you use the tools that's actually gonna make you, uh, you know, sell more ultimately. So that's the first item here. The second piece is minimal virtual selling training. A lot of the sales programs that we've seen are focused on in-home selling, uh, whether that be, you know, the doorknob close or, you know, how you actually present at the kitchen table. Those are training methodologies that were made for, you know, in-home uses and are really tough to apply to a virtual sell selling, uh, your virtual setting. So really important that we uh, focus on, you know, improving the training for your sales reps from a virtual standpoint. We'll touch on some of that today. The last piece here is poor homeowner communication throughout that entire process. Uh, poor communication is one of the top three reasons uh, why homeowners will choose not to buy your product and go with a competitor. So you've got to have good communication throughout this process. Uh, what we're finding is a lot of these homeowners, especially now that they've got a lot of time, they're spending more time on the internet, they're shopping around for many more quotes than they ever shopped around before. So it's important that you're continuing following up with the homeowner and I'll talk through some best practices in a bit, uh, but that's that's another key piece here. So sales reps are struggling to close deals virtually and we gotta address it because let's face it, this is gonna be the future. So I want everybody to head on over to the chat. I, I appreciate that half of you guys aren't running virtual appointments. Uh, but I'm curious, what are your biggest challenges with respect to running these virtual appointments? So if you guys wouldn't mind heading over to the chat on the right hand side of the screen and let us know your biggest challenge. This could be your challenge if you're running virtual appointments, as well as maybe your fear with running virtual appointments. And we'll make sure that we address that in this webinar. So Ingrid, let's give them a, a minute or so to uh, type in their responses. Yeah, while people do that, I can just uh, to jump in on what you said. I think as a homeowner who have dealt with a number of uh, of vendors and uh, and remodelers, um, it can be quite chaotic to kind of follow up with uh, different quotes, compare the quotes as well, and some people take a long time to get back to you. And I think all those th small things really count. And I just see like a big difference between the ones who have started investing in technology and the ones who haven't. And especially if you're thinking about kind of reaching a younger um, generation of homeowners, then I think technology can be a real differentiator and something that sets you apart from other people um, in the buying process. Absolutely, Ingrid. All right, guys, don't be shy here. Head on over to the chat. Let us know what your biggest challenges are, and I'll and I'll and I'll touch on a couple that I that I I know for a fact are challenges here. Uh, the first thing is what I mentioned before: uh, getting homeowners that necessarily aren't technically savvy um, to actually engage um, and understand how to actually download the software. The other piece is measurement. Like, how do I get a homeowner to actually measure? on you know, virtually versus in the home where you can do the measurements or you can now you show them how to do their measurements. So uh, those are those are two things we've noticed. Bobby mentioned building value without being face-to-face. -face. And then Dale mentioned, mentioned, we talked about this earlier with having the tools in place, um, system set up to do the measuring, the presenting and the negotiating. Uh, people can't touch the products that we sell. That's a really good point. What we're finding is some folks are actually dropping off samples uh, to the person's house. I actually ordered some flooring samples the other day on a website and they were like $2 a piece. And I ordered like five and got them in the mail like a couple, of, a couple of days later. And that was really great. Nice. What did you decide on? Uh, we haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point though, with the building value without being face to face. Uh, and that's why I want to make sure we have a caveat here, guys. You, you, you shouldn't only be doing virtual appointments. You should be giving the homeowner the option. Uh, if folks are willing to do a virtual appointment as opposed to an in-home appointment, they're likely going to be uh, more receptive over what you guys bring to the table. 
Uh, so that, that's, that's the one thing that I've noticed. Uh, Sarah says sometimes customers don't know how to get the call open on their phone. Uh, that's a really good point, Sarah. Uh, it, the, uh, that's why we love Whereby because it's just a browser based solution. So I encourage you guys with whatever solution you do decide to run your virtual appointments, make sure it's stupid easy for the homeowner, like stupid easy for the homeowner. And, and before you roll it out, Test it with a few folks. Test it with your mother, your grandmother, your kid, like whoever, uh, to make sure that it's going to be a good solution and it's easy to use. Because this might be the first time they've actually done a virtual appointment aside from maybe FaceTime, right? We actually have uh, another customer, a big customer, who are uh, using our platform to do or to facilitate doctor-patient consultations in the UK with the whole, um, they're a vendor to the national healthcare system. So... And they chose us basically because of this and, and the fact that people can just click and join the conversation on mobile. And for anyone who has a, a modern smartphone, Android or iOS, um, it should work. But I, will, I would also say it's maybe a good idea when to gauge the customer, either if you have like a lead form or um, when you have an initial call conversation to kind of <laughs> fill them out a little bit on on how you, receptive you think they'll be to, to doing things uh, virtually. Absolutely, that's a good point. Because you're going to be having that pre-qualification call, guys, before the appointment. So you can have you can give them that option then, and you know, warm them up, like Ingrid mentioned. Uh, what we're finding here, and, and again, I, 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 we've had a million webinars over the past few months that says COVID, 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 COVID. You guys are sick of hearing about the pandemic. I get it. Um, and and the one thing I will say that the pandemic has done is forced companies, especially remodelers, to shift to adopting more. Uh, virtual selling as well as just digital tools as a whole. Um, so I, I want to highlight a few key points here. Zero virtual appointments set in February inside a patch. And then in March, suddenly that jumped to 500 per week. So remodelers are adopting virtual appointments at an increasing rate. And the shift is happening not just because of COVID, but also the fastest growing home buyer segment is millennials. Millennials are more tech savvy and their average age of their home it's 31 years old. Ingrid, you mentioned your home is, what'd you say, 40 years old, 30 years old? I'm 37. The, uh, the age of your home. Oh, 45. 45. So Ingrid's got an older home. She's in her 30s. Uh, she needs work done. In fact, she, she is literally getting work done right now. She got flooring samples. Uh, and Ingrid is very technologically savvy, right? So uh, Ingrid is is your is who you're selling to right here, guys. Ingrid and myself are the people you're selling to, and we're the Free fastest research. growing home buyer segment. Yep. <laughs> so uh, this is an interesting stat because they're going to need work done on their home. They're going to buy the home. The interest rates here in the U.S. are super low. I've got so many friends that just bought bought their first home, and suddenly they're realizing, oh man, I I can't replace my own roof. I can't do a bathroom remodel or model. I need to call somebody about this. So these are going to be your, your future buyer over the next few years. And this is an interesting stat from you, uh, Ingrid, this whereby stat. Yeah, I mean, since uh, we had an enormous spike um, in March and April, obviously, and it's veined off a little bit, but uh, has also sustained. And now we're kind of seeing the second round um, picking up. Mm. But I think uh, for me, I think uh, being a bit bored of the pandemic, I think it's an interesting chance to look at what's the permanent change going to be and how people work and interact and how businesses operate as well. And what are the opportunities that could be out there for you? Like one thing I think of with all of the people that we have had done work here is how much time they spend driving <laughs> across the city or even from outside of the city, some of them are, and they spend like so much time commuting. So there's a big opportunity for them to save more time or use the time for value generating activities if they could kind of stay in the office or home and and just do these like administrative follow-up or or customer appointments and maybe also you could expand your the area that you're serving by doing this because you would maybe have to go travel to the customer's home one or two times um instead of like several meetings leading up to the actual work that's a great point ingrid so today we're going to be covering three key things, um, tips to keep your homeowner engaged, how to close the deal without stepping foot in the home, and tools that can make your entire sales process touchless. 
Uh, Inger, that's such a good point that you just made with respect to the travel time and expanding the location areas. Uh, that's just going to make you so much more competitive. Yeah, I've seen here in uh, in Norway, there's this new marketplace that's popped up and it's kind of a digital marketplace for uh, interior decorators. And you can see kind of the profile that they have. And I was uh, tipping my parents off because they live in quite of a small town and maybe not a lot of high quality creative um, interior people. So then they could kind of consult with someone over video and um, work with them to kind of get some suggestions, even though it's... Uh, 400 miles away. <laughs> I love that. So a quick commercial about Hatch. Uh, and we'll do a quick commercial about whereby how we work together and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of the content here. Uh, but we are a messaging platform uh, designed specifically to increase your close rate as a remodeler, as an exterior company, a home improvement company. Uh, what we do is we connect up to all your lead forms, whether you're getting leads from Angie's List, Modernize, Home Advisor, your website. Uh, we automate that initial follow-up, and the, if they don't respond, the follow-up after that as well. So we put speedily, we get you first to the lead over text, email, and voicemail. We put that all on autopilot for you, as well as that sales follow-up process, that rehash process. And now I'm going to actually touch on some uh, rehash best practices today, uh, because doing rehash is super, super important, especially after you run a virtual appointment. Uh, we also help with appointment and installation confirmations, uh, but ultimately we're a messaging platform that's going to allow you to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with the homeowner, develop those relationships. We had a comment in the chat here about building value without being face-to-face. -face. This is something that's going to help you build value without being face-to-face because -face, you're going to be in their inbox, you're going to be in their text messages, you're going to have those conversations. And ultimately it's for your entire team. So in the same way whereby it's an awesome collaborative meetings platform, that you, your team can use internally as well as you know when you, you run those, those virtual appointments, uh, but we're that one, we're this one collaborative platform for your entire team to work, have those conversations with home letters, so on and so forth. Yeah, so this is um, a gift showing you whereby basically how a meeting looks like with four people. Um, you can be between two people and up to 50 with the business plan. And um, we really kind of put a lot of emphasis on the video, basically to let you build those personal relationships and build a trust um, since you can't meet in person. And I've worked with people or I work on a daily basis with people that I've never met in person. And um, I think for me, it's definitely possible to build those relationships. And I'll give you some tips on how to do that. But basically it's a very simple web page, and you have the controls on the bottom where you can um, uh, turn on and off your cam and mic. You can start a screen share. You can send links in the chat. Um, and that's the basic functionality. Like there's not a lot of us. We've kind of focused on the things that most users will need to do and understand how to do. If you go to the next one, I think there was a bit more. So we have basically been rated the easiest um, to use video conferencing tools of all <laughs> more above Zoom and Google Meet uh, and all of that. So like I said, you'll set up like a really easy link. And uh, with the business plan, you can set up multiple rooms for different customers, for example. So you can have one room per customer uh, that you always have a, a fixed meeting place for them. And they just click the link and join the meeting, whether it's on desktop or mobile. Um, and, and uh, we really put a lot of thought into the guest experience as well. So there's a pre-stage where we help them set, give permission to use the cam and mic and they can choose the one that they want to use. And we built this integration uh, particularly because this last slide, right? Easiest to use um, as well as the same URL. So, we love whereby because you're able to have your own personal link and drop it and it can be branded for your company. So if you, know, you are, you know, exterior modelers of America, you can have it branded exactly with your color scheme, your logo, all that good stuff and have an actual uh, URL that's tied to that. That's, that's personalized. So here's an example of you working your conversations inside of Hatch. You can click this whereby link that we just saw here. You see it right here. I'm hovering my, my, uh, my pointer over it. Uh, you can quickly drop in that virtual appointment. So when somebody says, yeah, let's meet right now, you can send that uh, immediately over text, 
or email. So really cool stuff here. Uh, and we're really proud to have this integration with Whereby. Whereby is a great tool. Again, like I mentioned before, the browser based is just significant. Uh, it makes it so easy to use. So it's uh, foolproof for the homeowner. Yeah, and I think what you mentioned about branding as well, um, it's a great feature we have because we think that people should feel like they're meeting you and your company and get an impression of your brand, your style, and your personality. They shouldn't be kind of feeling like they're meeting a generic video provider. So I think we're the only service more or less that lets you do this kind of uh, branding and you can really make things look great. And you guys brand, you, most folks are already branding their, their estimating and their quoting. So why not? Do your you know commercial meetings platform as well. It's it's a no brainer. All right, Ingrid, this is this is all you. <laughs> How to keep homeowners engaged during the appointment? Subject matter expert. Yeah, so I think um, one of the key things is really to set up in a good um, spot, um, have good lighting, um, make sure you have a good cam and mic. Like these will do. You don't need like super expensive equipment. Um, and most laptops have a good enough um, camera to use. I would maybe recommend a laptop and not mobile just because it's kind of easier to navigate screen and you probably want to um, use maybe other systems uh, for measurement or so on as you work with the customer. Um, and, and also kind of actively use muting and think about the sound landscape around you. If you're in a shared office, maybe you have like a small meeting room that you can go, you can go into to not get so much background noise, or you can use mute actively, um, to mute when you're not talking and also kind of talk into the camera to try to create, uh, replicate that personal feeling. And, uh, and you can kind of also, if you have an external camera, you can set it up at uh, a good height for you. And also make sure you're comfortable. If you go to the next one. And as a speaker as well, kind of try to act as you would normally and don't, uh, or try to spend enough time doing it in advance so that you're not um, nervous or feeling insecure about how it works. Maybe test it a bit internally with other people or your family first and try to act a bit casual um, and maybe spend a few first minutes on small talking and getting to know the person a little bit, get a feel for how their day is going and um, what situation they are in. So, and don't kind of overthink it. And I would just coming back to the point that someone made about kind of building value, I think also building trust and kind of forming a little bit of a relationship in the first moments of the call is, is well worth the time, um, which can maybe be a bit uh, challenging if you have a lot of appointments to get through and you only have like a short amount of time. But I think once you kind of have established that and, and people get a good feel for you, all of the rest of the stuff is going to be much easier. Maybe also good to kind of prepare by having a script or a couple of questions that you want to add or some points that you need to get through, maybe some information you need to get from the customers and have that list kind of somewhere near the camera so you can walk through it. Maybe even um, you could also consider sharing it with the customer in advance if you need them to find some information, like taking measurements or think about some options so that they are um, the most prepared that they can be to get value out of the call. Um, Yes, and also um, don't forget to listen. It's easy, I know, when you're in sales to kind of um, be proactive, but it's often um, good to also give people a little bit of time. And that can be a little bit awkward sometimes in video meetings because this, it's this awkward silence. But uh, I think it's also that's when maybe you get the good stuff, um, when people really have to think and come up with a reply. So it might be good to have some questions built in around um, how they're feeling about some options or uh, some open questions to kind of give them a chance to explain how they think. Um, in Whereby, we also have some um, uh, this reaction emoji feature. So you can kind of give a thumbs up or something while you're listening to give feedback and, and kind of be an active listener and um, make people feel like you're, you can relate to what they're saying. And then um, 
I think there's a lot to be done in terms of giving a really good call um, or a pitch in terms of preparing material in advance. And uh, you guys probably have a lot of kind of custom uh, tools that you use for drawings and, and, and preparing the actual work. And I would spend a bit of time on exploring how you can bring those into the call and really show it off to the customer. Um, in Whereby, we have screen sharing functionality. So you can choose if you want to share the entire screen um, or just one application. So if you have a drawing program, for example, you could share just that. Um, if you wanted to show kind of initial thoughts or drawings that you're working on and get the customer's feedback on it. You could also go over the quote in this way um, or, or kind of take notes uh, together with a customer as you go and, and more or less work on things together with them. I and that brings me... That brings me to, yeah, sorry. Oh, I apologize. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that folks understand that when Ingrid was talking about having the, the quotes, uh, different software that you're using, if you're using a Mac, you can take four fingers or three fingers and slide right as you're screen sharing to jump to different applications. We're seeing a lot of contractors do that when they're running these virtual appointments. They can slide over to the left, pull up their quote, slide over to the left, pull up some measurements, slide over to the left, Whatever, whatever else technology that you need. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. I'm sliding to the left. Obviously, this is just my desktop, but imagine this was your quote. So uh, that's a really cool, cool, you know, I guess, tip, I guess you could say with respect to the screen share. Sorry for interrupting you, Ingrid. I no, that was, that was a neat there. trick. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I'll have to try that myself. <laughs> But I think the the presentation you're giving is another good example. Like you can put together some slides if you want. Um, uh, if you really want to get like a, make a creative impression or show off inspiration drawings um, and so on. And we actually, for those who are kind of getting advanced and want to go even further, we also have um, a whiteboard integration uh, with a service called Miro. And that basically lets you open up a canvas together with a customer that they can also interact with. Um, so it's kind of like a whiteboard. You can draw with a pen. You can also add stickies. You can add images. And um, everyone who's in the video room can then work on it in real time together. And note, this only works on desktop, not mobile at the moment. Um, so you may want to kind of prepare if you want to use it. But if you really want to do creative collaboration with the customers, this can be really exciting. Um, and you could also prepare boards in advance. If you're, for example, putting together like a mood board, you can kind of have different styles and options. You can zoom in and out and jump between them and add notes as you go. So I think um, this has really revolu revolutionized the way that we do workshops, for example. Um, and that's one of the hardest things to do virtually. So maybe also something you can use if you're working in a team in, in the company. You can outline timelines, um, map out dependencies, stuff like that. So it might be good for project planning as well. Yeah, and I see as a use case for this uh, when you're working with a customer, this is, this is a, effectively could be a way for you to quickly sketch out what you're thinking for a remodel without actually going through that whole CAD design process, right? Yeah, you could have like a super easy, just like squares um, to do, to play around with like these for the plan of the house, for example. Um, and you can do that in two seconds instead of setting up with correct measurements and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a little bit almost like PowerPoint, like just moving boxes <laughs> around. Yeah, and we had somebody make a comment earlier uh, about measurements uh, and how you can make sure that we we can actually take measurements virtually. Uh, so there's there's two things I want to highlight here. Uh, the first is if you're running an appointment uh, with two people, have one person hold the phone and the other person do the measurement. So that'll make sure that you're you know you're you're able to have an understanding of what they're measuring, make sure they're doing it right. Um, but if you only have one person, perhaps encourage them to use a free measuring app that's on their phone, or if they're good with the tape measure, they 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 feel good about the tape measure. Uh, some folks are not good with the tape measure, as I'm sure you know. Uh, <laughs> I so, might be one of them. Some people are professional uh, <laughs> remodelers and have laser measures. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, the Measure app is a really good iPhone app. I actually did this in our office. Um, 
and it's a it's a, it's the app that comes with the iPhone. You can actually stand right there and measure the two points, and it, it produces an accurate measurement. I checked this with the tape measure afterwards. It produces an accurate measurement. You can actually uh, take a picture by clicking the right hand dot here, um, the dot on the right hand side, and then you can actually take that image of the measurement and send it to. Uh, they can send it to you, they can share it, whatever the case may be here. So uh, that's a cool feature that I think uh, Apple released in their latest iOS update. Uh, but there's also other features uh, for Android devices as well uh, that allow you to do these measurement, other applications to do that. So uh, whether you're having them do a tape measure or using an app like this, uh, there's many ways to get accurate measurements. Um, traditionally, this augmented reality phone measurement thing was not accurate at all. Um, even as far as, uh, you know, as soon as like two years ago, it's, or even a year ago, these just weren't accurate at all. But this measure app on the iPhone has just proven to be super, super effective. We know contractors that are doing this today, uh, and that way they're able to make sure that they're uh, providing an accurate quote uh, with respect to the materials that they need. So uh, this is essentially like your interior uh, hover. You know, you guys are using hover for roofs, roof measurements. It's basically your interior version of that. I actually got an ID now as well, like what you could do to prepare. Um, and you could actually set up like a mirror board, just have like rough drawings of the plan um, of the house and then add like boxes where the customer could fill in the measurements in advance um, and then go through that together with them. It's a great idea. All right. So the next piece is we, we talked about running the appointment. Uh, Ingrid, thank you for all, all that insight. A lot of stuff I, I like, I, 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 I want to hope that I knew a lot of those best practices, but looking back, I'm like, I don't, I don't necessarily think of that before I walk into a meeting. So uh, super helpful, Ingrid. Thank you. So the next step here is how to close the deal without stepping foot into the home. So we walked through the appointment process. Now we got to actually walk through what you need to be doing after the appointment. You run the appointment. You ship them off the quote. Now what, right? You've got to make sure you're following up with them. A lot of sales reps have traditionally been following up with maybe a phone call or an email. And if they don't hear back or they get a no, they just forget about it and move on to the next one. It's important that you're following up with what we call a multi-touch approach. So feel free to take a screenshot of this. I'm going to show you guys some templates in a bit to use for this follow-up process. But... Nevertheless, this is the, uh, the multi-touch approach that is working really, really well for remodelers today. We process millions and millions and millions and millions of measurements every single, or excuse me, messages every single month. Uh, so we know what messages work in what order. So this is what we found to be the ideal uh, methodology for combining texting, emailing, as well as voicemail when you follow up with these quoted leads. So touch one, 48 hours after the appointment, uh, call it the triple triple play, text, email, voicemail. Next day, they, if they don't respond, follow up with the text. And then day four, you wait two days. You don't want to bug them too much, but you want to make sure you're following up a text and email and then so on and so forth. So uh, this is a really uh, important thing because, like I mentioned before, sales reps are not always following up uh, more than once after a quote. And what we found is that it takes anywhere from four to six touches after the appointment to actually get a response from a homeowner. And we see this in our platform all the time. You know, traditionally sales reps would give up and move on to the next one. But if you have a follow-up process in your business and Hatch can actually put this on autopilot, you don't even have to send anything. It will do it automatically. And then when they respond, you can jump into the conversation. But whatever you're doing for following up, make sure you're doing it. And we call this rehash, right? It's that follow-up for people that didn't buy on the first appointment. Uh, so it's not just for people that said no at the appointment. It's also for people that are tire kickers or go dark, you know, especially now more than ever, people are spending more time online. They're getting more quotes. This millennial buyer is especially shopping around their price matching, all that stuff. And those are going to typically be the people that fall into this tire kicker, go dark type of, uh, uh, I guess, candidates for rehash here. So when you do this multi-step campaign, guys, you got to make sure that you're hitting the right people. Uh, it's not just for people that said no at the appointment. Uh, it's also for people that are kicking the tire and go dark. And ultimately, what we call rehash or this, this follow-up from the quote, follow-up from this virtual appointment is designed to service objections over text, email, or phone calls. So 
what we found, and, and you can ask any of our customers, they find that that homeowners actually are more honest over text message than they are on the phone. So let that sink in for a second. Homeowners are more honest with you over text message than they are on their phone. I mean, that's natural. They feel awkward. Like a lot of homeowners don't necessarily want to say they don't have the money up front to afford your project. Uh, and if you're able to service that over text message, you can address it. I'm going to talk through how to actually address these objections here. But we found that there's really four key objections that we found. Price, timing, product options. I, I appreciate availability is super scarce right now, especially for, uh, you know, roofing and, 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 and lumber and all that stuff. So you might have less product options available for you right now uh, or a bad rep. And that's something that you can, all these things you can fix with the right handling of these objections. And that's really what our goal here is, guys. Uh, if you don't get the deal, if you run a killer virtual appointment, you do everything you can do, uh, don't get the deal on the first try. Make sure you're following up multi-touch, surface these objections, handle the objections, and close the deal. Number one objection that we found, because we do this all day, this is our bread and butter, guys, rehash, is pricing. Pricing is the most common objection you're running to. So I really just want to highlight four key things here. Uh, be willing to negotiate, obviously. Don't go in too high, especially the millennial homeowner. They're shopping around for, for other quotes. They know how much the job is worth. Don't go in too high and then try to drop the price as part of your rehash process. They're not going to buy that. We've seen that. We've seen it happen all the time. It might work like 10% of the time, but it's it's just not working like it used to. So you got to... Make sure you, you go in at a fair price, be willing to negotiate, maybe introduce different product options that can bring the price down a little bit. Um, offer financing options. Financing is becoming increasingly popular, especially now that interest rates are so freaking low, guys. I mean, it's it's a no brainer. You gotta make sure you have a financing partner. We work with Hearth. We have an integration with Hearth. Hearth is a great company, so check out that, that company and get hearth.com if you're interested in financing. Uh, present discounts or special offers that you've already advertised. Again. The new age of homeowners are super technologically savvy. They're doing their research. They're looking at your deals and offers. Don't present them with a special offer that hasn't been advertised because they're, they're just, they're just going to think you're, you're, they're using it to win your business. They're going to say, why didn't you? We've seen this before. Why didn't you just give me this price from the get-go? You're wasting my time. Uh, the fourth piece is owning your price. Uh, a lot of companies tend to just go straight towards, let me just negotiate, try to get the price down. But what we found is that if you are the best, which I trust you are the best in your area, own your price with your credibility and quality of work. And I'm going to talk through how to actually do that in a minute here. So I'm going to make this super brief in the interest of time here, guys. Um, but I'm going to highlight one key component here. And, and these are templates. We're going to send these out after the webinar. So you can use these in your text and your emails when you get objections. Just copy paste. These are, these are templates that work really well. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here. So I want everybody to look at the bottom here. Lower quote from a competitor. So somebody comes in, we see this all the time, they get a lower quote from a competitor. So there's two options here. You can go in and compare quotes, see if you can work the price or work the product to address the quote. Or option two, own your price because you're the best at what you do. And I, and I wanted to highlight this, especially option two, owning your price, because we're finding that this method of handling the objection is working tremendously. So when somebody says, I got a lower price from a competitor, be like, okay, most likely that competitor is probably not very good, or it's a chuck in the truck or Larry in the ladder, whatever you want to call them, one man show, you could go in and say, yeah, but we just did a house down the street, go check it out. So you could say something like, you'll find that the work that we do is the best in town. You're going to love what we do. When you have a moment, go check out, you know, you can send an address if that homeowner is okay with you to send you that, send that address as a, uh, as a referral type of thing and maybe provide them an incentive for that referral. Uh, check out this address uh, to take a look at a recent completed project or send them a link directly to your customer uh, testimonials. Send them a link to your Google reviews. Send them a link to maybe your website where it shows screenshots of recently completed projects. Own that price. So, you know, if, if you're in a position where you have to actually lower the price or, or compare quotes, that's fine. Definitely offer financing, uh, make it more affordable for them up front. 
whatever you need to do there. Um, but what we found is owning your price by actually sending, you know, locations that you've recently, jobs that you've recently completed has been incredibly effective because the homeowner, they, they actually want to work with you. They just got a lower price and they're starting to have second guessing about your company. So just make sure you go in with that, um, you know, that those, those pictures or that address or whatever of a recently completed project works really well. Cool, and this is the last point here. We had somebody come in and say uh, on the chat here and talked about the biggest challenge that they have is they have a system that's set up to do the measuring, presenting, and the negotiating. So this is a virtual selling toolkit. Uh, you can see more at usehatchapp.com slash digital dash toolkit. Uh, these are basically the best tools in the business that we found. Virtual appointments whereby hover for exterior measurements, plan R for interior measurements, as well as excuse me, this measurement app here. Company Cam is great for taking job pictures. Leap is awesome for estimating as well as one click contractor. Uh, communication and patch, it's a gimme there. Um, but I'm just gonna go through these real quick guys. Uh, hover, great for exterior measurements. I know we have some roofers on the line here. Uh, if you're not using Hover, I highly encourage it. They're a partner of ours. We're in the process of building an integration with them. A really great company, really great people, and really great product. Company Cam, they're another partner of ours. We're also building an integration with these guys. Uh, you can drop these Company Cam pictures that you're taking of the job directly into your Hatch text and email conversations. So I encourage you guys to check out Company Cam if you haven't already. So you can layer Company Cam for your job pictures along with Hover for your measurements. Uh, and you got a win-win scenario there. And last but not least, a tool to do all your messaging and a tool to run all of these virtual appointments. We work really well together. We showed this earlier, guys. Uh, use Hatch to you know, set the appointment, automate that follow-up, and then actually just drop that whereby link directly in your conversation. So you see here, I'm saying, great, join my reading room here. Hit the whereby button right here. And I have this branded base exteriors meeting room that we can send people to. So. This is a, a great combination of products. The customers that are using Whereby and Hatch together um, are seeing a lot of success. Uh, if they're able to run these virtual appointments with ease. Like I mentioned before, Whereby is a great tool, uh, the easiest to use uh, video meetings application in the market today. Make it easy for your homeowners. You'll get more deals closed, I guarantee it. All right, so I promised you guys that we're going to uh, give you guys some uh, giveaways as part of this webinar for hopping on here. Uh, so we have a free trial of the Whereby business plan to run virtual appointments. We're gonna send this link out after the webinar to sign up, but I'm gonna actually send this right now in the public chat so you guys can fill it out after this webinar. So. There we go. I just dropped it in the chat. So I encourage you guys to click that link I just dropped in the chat to sign up for a uh, for the Whereby business plan and get a free trial to actually run these appointments. So I encourage you guys to sign up to that. Start running your virtual appointments. And we're also giving away a month of Hatch. Uh, so I'm going to run our audience through our randomizer. All right. Okay. So the winner of the free one month of hatch to actually set these virtual appointments, automate your follow up to actually get these appointments, make them happen, make sure people attend these appointments is Brooke Ezzo from American Design and Build. So congratulations, Brooke. We'll be reaching out to you after the webinar and get you started with a free month of hatch to automate those follow ups and help you set more of these appointments. So uh, really excited for, uh, for, you to have that opportunity there. And again, everybody, you, you, you all get a free trial of the Whereby business plan. This isn't something that Whereby is giving out to everybody. They're giving it out specifically for this webinar. So Ingrid, thanks for opening up your product to our audience here today. Yeah, great to be here and very excited to see how this plays out in your industry. And you're doing really great work at Hatch, I think, to help, um, help the industry use technology in new ways. So that's super exciting. Awesome. So we got a quick q and I had saw a couple questions come up here. And so we're just going to tackle those two questions. If you have any questions while we're going through these, hop on over to the Q&A section 
on the right hand, right hand side of your screen. Uh, but the first question is, how often do people ask for virtual appointments? That's a super interesting question. I, I see it different per industry. Uh, what we found is that interior remodeling companies, you definitely see a, uh, it's more common for people to ask for virtual appointments, whereas for exterior companies, it's a little bit easier. Uh, you're going to, to to go to the house, um, or at least for homeowners that are concerned about the pandemic, concerned about you know that that type of thing, uh, they're going to be more comfortable with you going outside of the house uh, versus inside the house. And we see more common with interior. Uh, but again, like I mentioned, guys, make sure you provide people with that option and have the staff available uh, to actually run these virtual appointments. And it can be the same sales rep that goes in the home or does virtual, or you might want to have one rep that's really good at running virtual appointments, really good on camera, uh, have them run those. You can structure a team in many different ways, test, see what works best for you. The next question we have here uh, is uh, for, uh, this is a good question for you, Ingrid. I use my calendar to schedule appointments and whereby connect to that. Um, yes, we have a Google Calendar integration and also for Outlook. Um, and it depends a little bit on how you use it. If you have a regular link every time, um, that's quite short. It's also, you can basically just type it into any calendar solution. Um, if you use a tool like Calendly, um, you can also set it to be your default um, meeting uh, location there. That's awesome. Thanks, you, Ingrid. All right. Well, with no more questions, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you for building an incredible product that remodelers are seeing success from today. And personally, here at Hash, we're seeing a lot of success from. So thank you. Thanks for hopping on. Really appreciate it. Best of luck to everyone. And um, look forward to hearing more great things from you, Josh. You bet. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a great rest of your week.